forward movement of the body of the mandible is held in check by two ligaments that lie outside the tempora mandibular joint. We'll add these to the picture after we've looked at the four principal muscles that move the jaw. We'll move on now to look at those four muscles. They're known collectively as the muscles of mastication. The muscles that close the jaw are much more powerful than the ones that open it. Closing is produced by three large muscles on each side, the medial pterygoid, the temporalis, and the masseter. Opening is produced by the lateral pterygoid muscle, which we'll see in a moment, and by some smaller muscles below the mandible that we'll add to the picture later in this section. Of the four muscles that we'll look at now, we'll start with the one that's hardest to see, the lateral pterygoid. To get a look at it, we need to remove the coronoid process and the zygomatic arch. This lets us see the infratemporal fossa and, behind it, the lateral pterygoid plate. Here's the lateral pterygoid muscle. It's quite small. The lateral pterygoid muscle arises partly from the underside of the greater wing of the sphenoid and partly from the lateral aspect of the lateral pterygoid plate. The fibers of the lateral pterygoid muscle run backward and a little laterally. We'll go around to a medial view to see where they go. The main insertion of the lateral pterygoid is into this hollow on the front of the condyla process. The lateral pterygoid also inserts onto the capsule of the temporomandibular joint and into the front edge of the articular disc. These windows in the capsule were made artificially, as in the shot that we saw previously. Now that we've seen the lateral pterygoid, we'll add the medial pterygoid muscle to the picture. The medial pterygoid muscle is larger than the lateral pterygoid and runs in a quite different direction. The medial pterygoid muscle arises from both the pterygoid plates, the medial aspect of the lateral one and the lateral aspect of the medial one, also from this corner of the maxilla, the tuber. The fibers of the medial pterygoid muscle run downwards, backwards and laterally. They insert here along the inner aspect of the angle of the mandible. Before adding the next muscle, the temporalis to the picture, we'll put the coronoid process back in place since that's where the temporalis inserts. Here's temporalis, the largest of the muscles of mastication. It's shaped like a fan. The temporalis arises from the wide area on the side of the skull that lies within the temporal line. The fibers of temporalis converge from above and from behind on the coronoid process. They insert on the outer aspect and the inner aspect of the coronoid process and also here on the anterior part of the ramus of the mandible. Now we'll put the zygomatic arch back into the picture. The temporalis muscle lies inside the zygomatic arch. Near its insertion, the temporalis is a thick muscle. It occupies the whole of the infratemporal fossa. The temporalis muscle is covered over by this dense layer of deep temporal fascia. The fascia is attached to bone along the zygomatic arch and all the way around the temporal line. Lastly, we'll add the masseter muscle to the picture. Here's the masseter. It's a thick, powerful muscle. The masseter arises from the anterior two-thirds of the lower border of the zygomatic arch on its outer aspect and from the whole length of the arch on its inner aspect. The fibers of the masseter muscle that arise on the outside run downwards and backwards. 
Those on the inside run straight downwards. The masseter inserts into this wide area on the angle and ramus of the mandible. The masseter muscle on the outside and the medial pterygoid muscle on the inside converge on the angle of the mandible in very similar ways. Now, let's take a look at the actions of the muscles that we've just seen. The action of closing the jaw is performed by the upward pull of the temporalis, the masseter, and the medial pterygoid muscles. Opening of the jaw is brought about partly by the force of gravity, partly by the forward pull of the lateral pterygoid muscles, and partly by the backward and downward pull of muscles we'll see in a minute that act by way of the hyoid bone. We've not yet seen the two accessory ligaments that restrain forward movement of the mandible. These are the stylomandibular ligament and the sphenomandibular ligament. The stylomandibular ligament goes from the styloid process to the angle of the mandible. The sphenomandibular ligament goes from this small projection, the spine of the sphenoid, to the lingula. Now that we've